What's up everybody, welcome back to The Pulse. Today we're delving into a topic that resonates with many, the best first job. Embarking on your career is like opening a door to a world of possibilities, and the first job often sets the tone for exciting chapters ahead. Whether you're a recent graduate, someone contemplating a career change, or just curious about the diverse paths people take in their early professional lives, this episode is tailored just for you. We'll be exploring stories of resilience, growth, and unexpected opportunities that emerge from those initial steps into the working world. Whether you're in the midst of searching for your first job, reflecting on your early career experiences, or seeking inspiration for what lies ahead, join us on this journey as we uncover the best first jobs that leave a lasting impact. It's time to celebrate the diverse and transformative nature of those pivotal early career moments right here on The Pulse. So I wanted to start out uh, by saying that a good first job often depends on individual preferences and personal goals and experiences and circumstances, but there are some pretty common characteristics that make a good first job. And those are learning opportunities, a supportive environment, clear expectations, and work-life balance. So when I say learning opportunities, I mean a job that affords you the opportunities to learn new skills, gain experience, and develop professionally. This can be really, really good for every other job you have after that, because each each job you have is going to give you a new set of skills that you can just build upon. So you want a job that's going to give you something to learn, something new. A supportive environment. You want helpful colleagues and supervisors who can make the work enjoyable and feel encouraging. A job with clear expectations is so helpful for someone who's just starting out. It's really important to know what it is that you're supposed to be doing at your job, especially if it's a new job or you're early in your career, really help you understand how to perform effectively from from day one. And work-life balance is so important. A job that allows for a reasonable work-life balance is a really a, a good thing and can contribute to overall life well-being and job satisfaction, especially for those people who are just starting out. Uh, a work-life balance is a great way to, a good work-life balance is a great way to ease into your, your career. Uh, again, though, ultimately, the best first job is going to vary depending on each person and their circumstances, interests, and goals. So it's important to consider these things when choosing a job that aligns with what you want to do. Also knowing that you're probably going to have to take a job at some point that maybe isn't your dream job. Like We're not all going to start as, um, you know, rocket scientists. <laughs> we don't start there. Uh, most of us start in some sort of service industry. So some really good categories of first jobs are retail, retail and customer service, internships. Um, internships are great because... They allow you to gain industry-specific experience and build your professional network. And so that's a really great way, a great place to start. And you're in a, a supportive role, and those roles are almost always in need. Admin assistants are also uh, a really great first position. It can help you to develop organizational and time management skills as well as multitasking. And those are transferable skills beyond a shadow of a doubt. Tutoring is also great. So if you like working with kids and you have expertise in a particular subject area, that can be a really great first job as well. Food service and hospitality. So jobs in restaurants, cafes, or hotels, they can teach you teamwork, customer service, and time management. Uh, among many, many other skills. And you'll notice here in the jobs that I'm describing, multitasking comes up a lot. The ability to multitask is so super important in in the workforce today. Entry-level positions in healthcare, such as medical assistant, caregiver, or receptionist, can also um, be a great first step into that industry. So if you wanted to get into healthcare, starting out in a an entry-level position there can teach you sort of the, well, definitely the language, but also the culture of healthcare, which is really, really important um, for career advancement. Sales associates, so working in any kind of sales is great. Can It can, it can help you develop um, your skills of persuasion and negotiation, which can always be beneficial, especially when you come to, um, when it comes to 
job performance evaluations and talks about salary negotiations. If you have those skills, those conversations are going to be just that much easier for you. Freelancing or gig economy work. So like uh, photography, graphic design, those things, if you're really, really good at something like that, you have a, a marketable skill, those are great first jobs because you can sell that kind of thing on platforms like Fiverr or Upwork or TaskRabbit even. Um, and you can also sell your skills, you know, just like amongst your friends. So you can sort of ease into the workforce that way. And then entry level positions in technology like tech support, um, data entry or quality assurance can give you a really good foothold in the technology industry and can provide opportunities for career growth. So I want to talk about a few specific positions and then I'll throw it to you guys to see what your thoughts are. Uh, number one, restaurant servers. We staff typically uh, serve food and drinks to diners at tables and restaurants and this gives them lots of opportunity to work on their communication and interpersonal skills an added benefit of this job is that if you do it well there's potential for earning more money through some generous tips so if you're comfortable doing that type of work the earning potential can be pretty high and serving is a great way to work on small talk social resilience and networking it has you working with coworkers, customers and managers so you learn how to communicate in a variety of ways with a variety of different people fast food workers um, are often in really busy environments and they have to multitask and there comes that word again this type of job allows for skill development and communication memory technology thinking on your feet being able to handle a loud sometimes really crowded workspace all while standing on your feet and sometimes for hours at a time with minimal breaks. Uh, and that can be really, really difficult. But it's also a great way to get started. And it's a really great way to have something on your resume that shows that you can do some pretty hard work. It's Fast food is not easy. Um, you know, working in those restaurants, like I worked in Tim's, and it was not easy. It's not, it's not a laid back job. Um, retail positions also are something that are great places to start cashiers specifically along with working with the public they're expected to handle financial tr transactions so they're working on um, <clears throat> customer service skills and handling variety of different transactions uh, but these jobs are great because they have flexible hours there's often um, large teams involved so there's teamwork and they offer a lively work setting that suits people with different backgrounds and experiences so people who like to be friendly and social will find those types of jobs satisfying and that's might be something that you find to be a really easy first job and jobs in recreation i wanted to talk about uh, specifically lifeguarding uh, lifeguarding develops responsibility by safeguarding swimmers and in enhancing <clears throat> enhancing vigilance and accountability um, they also cultivate leadership and quick decision making skills through independent work or teamwork during emergencies while refining their customer service abilities through interaction with patrons to ensure a positive experience um, it gives them an opportunity to work with again a variety of different people the people who are you know there to have a good time and want to be safe so they're there to promote fun and also safe while being fairly serious and vigilant right so it's it's a stressful job also comprehensive training in first aid and um, cpr equips lifeguards with life-saving skills lifeguarding experience not only makes your resume look really good but it showcases qualities like responsibility leadership and critical thinking and it looks great on for not only future job prospects, but on college applications as well. So yeah, let's talk about some of some of our our first jobs. Um, Kayla, you mentioned that your one of your first jobs was was babysitting. What was that like for you? Uh, it, it was it was really good because uh, we had uh, when I was younger, we had a lot of family friends with children who were quite young, um, and I always wanted to be an actor, so imaginative imaginative play was something that I wanted to keep up in my life. Uh, so getting to so for me, like working with the kids and watching the kids and doing imaginative play for them with them was actually really helpful for my future. And, and just keeping up that side of myself uh and um and i also 
I've always enjoyed working with kids. Um, I I watch a, a friend's kid part time now, and uh, and I work uh, with Canucks Autism Network uh, in the programs with the young kids, which I which I find really. Uh, really rewarding and uh, and a lot of fun because I also like sports. So yeah, it, it definitely prepared me for uh, doing more serious work with children as I got older as well. And it prepared you for your first like professional job as an actor. Yes, yes, it, it yeah definitely helped with that too. Yeah, and um, and then uh, and then yeah, I went into doing background, and I there are two ways to do background, <laughs> um, and I did it uh, more as a stepping stone and a way to learn what it was like uh, to be on a film set, and I uh, and I probably took it more seriously than a lot of other people who were there, um, but. Uh, it was it was really good. I mean, if you want to go into any part of film as a young person, uh, if you're considering it, being an extra is great because you you get to see all the different sides of things and uh, and you get a chance to watch what everybody's doing if you're really paying attention and and yeah, get that feel for how a film set works uh, and that can be really helpful um even before you get training to do those jobs knowing how to work within the film environment is very important amazing so it's a bit like um interning almost you get to see yeah. sort of things that you wouldn't normally see if you were just doing a specific fill-in role like if you had a specific job and you're just focused on that yeah that's really cool yeah uh, yeah you definitely because as background, they kind of have you, there's a lot of hurry up and wait, but once you're on set, if like, I've been on set while they're doing lighting changes, I've been on set while they're running through with the stand-ins, um, and, uh, and all sorts of different things that, yeah, if you're, if you're, if you're just going in as an actor, you might not see that side because they, they want to keep you rested until it's your time to do your job. And, uh, because you're, you're right up there in front of the camera, right? So they, so they need to make sure that you're, that you're rested and perfectly capable <laughs> of being in front of that camera. And so, you don't get to see a lot of the other things that happen, and um, and yeah, with a camera operator, you're you're very focused on what's happening on camera. Once you're actually a camera operator, so you might not notice all the little things. And uh, and going into the more focused job, uh, knowing all of the little details that you can pick up on as a background, uh, I think is really important. Because because uh, then you have a much smoother transition rather than you're focused on your job and now something's happening and you didn't realize that this would happen because you're in your job. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. That's amazing. And Parker, what was your um, acting experience like? Your first acting experience like? Oh, my first time doing background. It was actually like I think what a lot of background would consider like a perfect day. It was like perfect. I think it was like it was like six or i think it actually was it was like six or eight hours it was over at like ubc and so i could just have my parents were able to drop me off and then pick me up afterwards i think the call time was it like it might if it was like six hours it might have been like like a 1 p.m thing to like 7 p.m and it, it was it was a nice day it was warm like we were filming in like an auditorium and like where so and then like our background holding was just like right next door we were like it was like outside well it was out it was like a tent it was like just big tents so it's just like we did go to one area and then we stay just like in that area other times for filming like you get moved you get like you get like the area you get checked in and then you got will get like shuttled to like a different area and that's where you'll be in background for like the rest of the day, but yeah. And so did and you, it, did you feel like you had any skills that you, you learned from that experience that you were able to bring with you to other jobs? I eventually, 
So I think I did end up learning um, how to like talk to other people because okay, it was because like some of the locations would be like farther out. And so there wouldn't be like transit right nearby. And so I would have to like start asking around like early in the day or like at lunchtime or whatever. Like, oh, yeah, I came from Vancouver. Is anyone else going back that way and stuff? I found that like because I would get hired a lot as like as like a student or like teenager or whatever. So a lot of the people on set were all like around the same age as me, which is like can go all the way down to me. Like some of them are like 15 to like because I started when I was like 18. But like I think even if I like went back and did it now, I would still be a teenager. But like so they generally go for like teenagers to be like, oh, yeah, some are being like 17 to like 25. But like so being with people my own age on set, everyone just wants to be friends with everybody. It's a lot easier to like try to find a ride home. Because not everyone also like, like not, not all of them like have cars and drive and stuff. So it's just, mm-hmm. so some of those times it was like kind of fun getting a ride back with people. I think it was that I saw an episode of this one TV show and I saw it was like a zoom out on this crowd. And I'm like, I want to be one of those people. And now it's like, I've been one of those people. And I just think like behind the scenes film stuff is really cool. And I think like if, and like, I wanted to be like a PA for a time, like a production assistant. So I could still like do like be on a set and stuff, but I don't have my driver's license yet. So I thought that like, oh, once I get my driver's license, I could like rethink it and stuff and maybe do that. But like I tried driving, there's too much stuff to pay attention to. You also work on patience because there is a lot of hurry up and wait in the film industry. Because yes. they'll be like, yep, go go to costume, go to makeup, make sure you're completely ready. Okay, now we're gonna wait for three hours because they don't actually need you yet, but they need some of you, but mm-hmm. not but not others. <laughs> So you you get to you get to work on lots of patience. <laughs> mm-hmm. That does it for this week's episode of The Pulse. Join us next time when we discover ways to save money and get on top of your finances. As always, if you have questions or ideas to discuss, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, send an email to voa at pacificautismfamily.com. We look forward to more of your great questions. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.